Hi YouTube, Hood Ninja again. Um, this is uh, Theory 101 predicting the intensity of earthquakes. I am smoking a cigarette. If you want to look at that in any bad way, I'm sorry for you. There's a lot of you out there that do do this, so don't. I don't want any hypocrites anyway. Uh, moving along. I want to do this video uh, real quick, but of course it's not going to be real quick at all. Uh, this is going to be a theory in predicting the intensity of potential earthquakes. Uh, predicting earthquakes and specific dates is a whole other thing entirely. Of course, the mainstream geological and scientific community, as well as the mainstream media, would have you believe there is no possible way of forecasting earthquakes like any typical meteorologist saying there is a 10 to 15 percent chance of rain next Sunday. Huh. Now, I know this sounds crazy if you haven't ever really looked into it, but I think the ordinary person can detect when a quake is going to go off, especially if you were born and raised in an earthquake prone area. Um, for example, the massive fish die-offs that are happening, if you've lived in California or Washington your whole life, you've never seen this before, and you have some type of gut instinct that is telling you something's bad, get the hell out of there. Um, same goes for everybody else on the Madrid as well. Uh, I've, I've seen a few people pack bags. We're talking people who were, who were raised, born and raised locals of these places, and they've just packed their bags and left and not looked back. And that's a big part of it, not looking back. You can't look back whenever you go to do something like that. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, uh, I've, I know, I'm, I'm sure you've had to have seen some of the articles, news articles, where they make a big deal about these people. I'm not just talking about the people who are leaving the flood, the flooded area. I'm talking about people in Oregon, Washington, California, who are making a big deal about it, and they're leaving. They're going somewhere else. Some are going more further inland, and some are going out of country. In which way, they're saying it's because of the increased seismic activity. Um, so... If there's locals, people I'm talking about born and raised around these places, and they're leaving due to increased seismic activity, then you know something's wrong. Uh, now, I don't fully know because I've never been on, a, on any of the coast for a substantial amount of time. Uh, I've been inland for 24 years, so whatever it is that's making these people who have been living in these places for all their lives just uh, all of a sudden sell off everything they have and move, is enough to convince me there is something off or not right. So, that's just me being able to detect something being wrong over there just by that simple observation alone. Alright, now, this is just the tip of the iceberg, we're going to get into it. Now, if you're watching this, I want to do a little experiment if you uh, don't mind, and it will be cool actually if I do see people participating in this. Uh, now, like I said, if you're watching this and you live in or on a potentially affected area of a fault line and or seismic zone, I want you to go find out the name of the fault and compose a short gist of it, the location, how big it is, the recent activity, and most importantly, the last major increase, or I mean, uh, the, the last major earthquake of a 4.0 or greater. Um, and the reason why is because in order to, well, from what I've learned, mainstream, most mainstream geologists and seismologists predict um, the intensity of these earthquakes by looking at how much time they have had to store up the amount of energy. Like, if it hasn't went off in a thousand years, it's probably going to be a 9.0 or greater. Um, which, the in 1911, I believe, is when the New Madrid went off. So it hasn't had enough time to build up uh, anything over an 8.0 but you do got to take into account the uh, recent activity I guess is what you would say that's been happening over there on that uh, particular fault line the shock of BP's Biloxi Dome experiment for one uh, all the way to the floods the clouds that are being created and uh, or precipitated on to the New Madrid. All that uh, is actually, what that's doing right now is, is creating an energy for the New Madrid to release. Uh, it's, it's um, you know what I mean? Like, whenever you start to pull in, it actually snaps. It don't matter how they're running into each other or, or whatever the, 
the illustration, the uh, illustrations or animations on the news stations will show you. They're pretty good though. That's a pretty good example, really. But anyway, the point is the seismic snap is being uh, set up for the New Madrid area. It is gaining potential energy very quickly. So is uh, Yellowstone. California has been one of the least active areas on the whole ring of fire so far. I mean, we've been having moderate 5.0s and 6.0s here and there pretty recently. There's been countless seismologists and, you know, experts go on the record and say, yeah, the last two year, two, three years, we've been having an increase and it hasn't looked like it's going to slow down any. Now, regardless of whether it's HARP, uh, a particle collider somewhere, a shadow government, or anything like that, or man-made, just put it like that, If it doesn't matter if it's man-made or caused or natural, it's happening, and you need to, everybody needs to acknowledge that. So, what I'm trying to do is, is whoever you are, if you're watching this, and you live anywhere near a known seismic zone or anything, and you know about it, give me the information on it, when it lasts, you know, uh, maybe a link to a news article or something like that, because what I'm about to do is try to map, and I want, I don't care where you live, if you have good information, go ahead and give me the, the information, because I'm going to map as much as I possibly can, but I really would like to map uh, the, these fault lines along the real foot rift in um, the new seismic, or the new Madrid seismic zone, uh, as well as over on uh, the coast on uh, the San Andreas Fault all the way up through Washington uh, and I guess Alaska I would like to know a little bit about your uh, the faults up there as well uh, personal uh, accounts of these things uh, so uh, like I said if you're if you can do that uh, credit and all that will be given to you whoever you are if you decide to do it uh, I'm trying to do this anyway I've located a fault which we uh, pretty much sit on here in Oklahoma we have two faults I haven't quite got the second one down but the first one is the mirrors fault and it is a surface crack it is very uh, special because of the way that it formed uh, you'd have to go and read the uh, article on it I have a link in one of the er earlier videos uh, one of my earlier videos but anyway uh, so like I said, I just want to go and have as many people. I mean, I, I mean, if you're good with numbers, I mean, just we'll, we'll get this figured out because if we can get a map done real quick for the rest of the year, then, I mean, you know, that'll be really good information to have and to pass around because uh, I don't know what's going on, but you, I, I mean, I can tell you right now something unnatural is happening. Um, and I have a theory on how we're getting all this rain on the New Madrid uh, seismic zone. Now bear with me, and I know a lot of people are going to oppose this this theory, but it is my humble opinion. Okay, HARP, uh, and the the reason why before I even say anything is because HARP is pretty much a particle collider. Okay, now whenever you acknowledge that HARP is pretty much a particle collider then you can say that it has the potential to heat the ocean surface into a vapor which then floats into the atmosphere into one of the the mo most likely the troposphere or the stratosphere and becomes a cloud pretty much like just straight raw cloud of vapor and what then happens is they will either use harp or more most likely use uh, cloud seeding uh, which is done with airplanes, uh, silver iodide and salt, uh, and dry ice. Anyway, so what they'll do is since Fukushima is over there, and we have like 31 reactors over here that are just like Fukushima, that reactors spewed 90 billion lethal doses of radiation into the atmosphere so far. Not one person, May 22nd, 2011, Two, um, like what two something two months after Fukushima not one case of radiation sickness has got out in America and nobody's asking why 
if you go pull up the jet stream and I can actually I'll probably post the link down there and give it to you anyway just to go look but if you go and and look at the jet stream you can see where it's per, where it's precipitating there's actually storms happening out in the Pacific right now that not a lot of people know about and uh, so what I'm thinking is harps cr is pretty much using the ocean to create a, a cloud to create a vapor to float up and form a cloud which they come in drop a silver iodide salt whatever type of cloud it is to seed it to precipitate and once it precipitates it drops most of the radiation into the ocean before it even hits us okay now what that does is of course there's still all this super dense vapor I guess is the only way I can uh, explain it that is continuing to spill over into the states right now and that's remnants of the radiation the, the radiation clouds that they're precipitating and dropping over the Pacific and of course these remnants are ended up are ending up uh, and I think intentionally I don't know if it's coincidence that this is happening at the same time but anyway these clouds that we're seeing all this crazy weather uh, we have like a split in the jet stream right now when it's cold and we have record this and that everywhere all, all that is because harps dipping into the atmosphere right there and creating these clouds and dropping all this radiation into the into the ocean before it cre gets anybody see because they don't want the scrutiny I'm gonna tell you right now I'm gonna have to end this very soon but that's just a real quick theory on that and I can elaborate like I said you must go look at the uh, at the jet stream forecast, uh, but you've got to be looking at one that actually has the little precipitation uh, bar at the bottom where it shows you like from green to yellow uh, how much rain it's got in it because it'll it it just it leaves Japan and as soon as it gets right over the Pacific, I've been documenting this for weeks now almost, and it'll just intensify and then as whenever as it's hitting the coast the west coast it turns into the light green so it goes from like purple and red and orange and all those intense colors to the green as it's hitting the uh the coast of uh california so that's that's a theory on that but that that's that's something else uh what i'm saying is is regardless it is happening there is record amounts of rain being dropped on the the new madrid seismic zone there is uh uh pressures and energies being built up there okay so now we must take an account uh that into account now whenever most seismologists do uh go and predict uh the intensities of some of these quakes they they take into a lot of account uh mostly the history when, when the last time it was that it went off but if they take in the the plate size movement pressure i mean they take in a lot of stuff into account but what it really comes down to is when it last went off and the time that it went off before that and the time that it went off before that because that way you have three references where you can use and let's say they're 300 year periods a piece and you'll know that there's another 300 year period you're gonna have to look out for right there and like I said, not very many people are doing it. Not many people are, are, are acknowledging it. And a lot of people are dying because of it. But anyway, um, so like I said, please give me your feedback on the, uh, if, like I said, if you live on or around a fault line, send me the information. We're going to try to do a little mapping real quick. It's a, it's a, it, may, it may be a failed experiment, but I want to try it anyway. I want to test and see if I can do it myself and then give the results back to the YouTube users as well and also the credit to the people who sent me the information. I just want to compile and gist it. Anyway, so I'm gonna get off here. Uh, this has been a longer video than what I wanted it to be originally. Uh, comments are always welcome. Negative comments are also welcome. Uh, constructive criticism. I haven't had much constructive criticism, so if you're gonna leave a negative or a bad comment, make sure you point out what it is that I did that would help me constructively with constructive criticism so uh, with that being said i'm gonna get off here uh god bless good day youtube